artist. I'm an artist and I'm in Los Angeles. Um, and what I currently do, I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> lately, I, well, I got my start as being a fashion illustrator. Um, and I've kind of gone through sort of a transition in the last couple of years, more specifically this last year. And um, that has sort of led me to painting, oil painting, and um, just kind of letting my creativity guide me. And, I, and I've been working on some short films and things like that. So kind of in a bit of a career like shift, I think. Yeah, amazing, but very creative. Yes. Brilliant. So where do you think your love of creativity comes from? Well, I mean, if we wanted to like philosophize, I guess, like I think that that, you know, inspiration or the drive for creativity definitely comes from somewhere else. Um, I think that I'm learning it's always been a part of me. It's very innate. And I think that I believe that everybody has sort of like a sole purpose. Um, and I think mine is creative expression. Um, it is so a part of me that like, I think I've had conversations over the years where some people are like, yeah, I'm just not creative. And like, they own it and it's just not part of them. And that to me, like, doesn't make sense, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I can't say specifically where it comes from other than I, you know, think it's just really always been, um, a part of me. Um, yeah. Amazing. So when you were growing up, did you like to draw and create things? I did, but it was always um, something different. It wasn't necessarily, it was drawing. I think every kid, you know, at some yeah. point loves drawing. Um, sometimes it was like making up plays with my siblings or um, pretending to be a fashion designer and like putting together like outfits out of like felt and you know, it's um, yeah. it's definitely it was something that I think my environment fostered, which was good. Um, I was a dancer, competitive dancer, for many years growing up, um, yeah. and I played piano. And so I think that you know that aspect of performance and stuff too has always been, um, yeah, a part of part of my life that I've enjoyed very much. And then I think drawing came later because. I had so many interests and I think I had a fear of being like mediocre at all things. <laughs> yeah. And so it was in, it was like after high school, I took a number of drawing classes at like a city college. Yeah. And that just kind of became my focus for a while. And then that turned into, that parlayed into illustration yeah. um, while, you know, still kind of dabbling in other other things on the side um but yeah it was really just kind of a decision of like if I really focused on something and put all my attention and like can I you know really develop that that skill so that's sure. kind of how that came to be amazing it sounds like you were very very creative like you say with the piano and the dance it's it's one of those worlds where a lot of people um are when you talk to somebody who's not creative they're like oh oh, you can do dancing and singing, oh, you can do piano and drawing, like, they just don't understand, you know, that it is a very expressive thing, and, and you can express yourself through different mediums in that way, and yeah. I, I speak to people all the time, and they're like, oh, so you teach drama and singing, oh, and you're like, well, I yeah. Know. I think that people like to, like, put people into boxes or something, um, yeah. And I think that, and you can obviously relate, it's like, I think you get to a point too where things just kind of become figure outable and you can kind of like use the same method. I don't know. Or it's just yeah. like you open these new little like doors in your brain that helps you like take in information and whatever, like. Absolutely. Yeah. Something with it. Um, and it's something too that like I've, you know, been reading like biographies of like artists or musicians and things like that. And it's the same as true for them as well. I think that there is, especially with masters and geniuses, I think that um, they, you know, just can kind of, I don't know what the word is, that they're just yeah. able to um, yeah, spread just, that across a lot of different things. Yeah, just kind of see it, you know, just yeah. just very much feel it. And, and it's just, an ex I think it's just a way of expressing yourself and whether it's through drawing or, or dance or 
you know or piano or whatever it is you know it just just kind of facets in different ways doesn't it and it just yeah. kind of all comes out in in one yeah I don't know I know what you mean it's hard to explain it isn't it but I love that like I'm trying to also learn to just like answer the call you know it's like if inspiration is yeah. calling just like take it run with, it, with it because I also learned that like you can intellectualize it later, you know, I don't think you need to think so much about the why while you're doing it. Um, It's always after the fact, like I can look back and be like, oh, that's why I did that. Or that makes sense because now that connects to this or whatever. Definitely, definitely. So do you remember your first um, piece that you did that you were really proud of? Um. Man, that's a tough question. I don't think I've ever really thought of that. I mean, I would say as of late because I just started oil painting like really last year. And that was always something that I was so drawn to painting ever since I was a kid. I loved being in art museums and other kids found it boring. I could just stare at a painting all day. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of, you know, I think that you sort of dance around the thing that you really want to do sometimes out of fear. Um, and so last year there was a couple of pieces that I did that were oil and um, it was maybe like the first time in a while that it really sort of like realized the vision that I had in my head, if that makes yeah. sense. Um, and that's something too that's cool about getting older and, um, you know, better at your craft is that you're able to like articulate your ideas much more efficiently. So Definitely. For my career as an illustrator. Yes. Um, I worked right before I started freelancing I worked in vintage fashion here in Los Angeles Um, and that was great I mean we had this it was this huge warehouse about seven like 17,000 square feet of just dresses like just thousands of dresses Um, some of them we called like damaged goods but they would be used for like costuming or like design inspiration and so we had just you know regular shoppers come in but we also had a lot of um design teams from fashion houses and yeah. from costume design for film and tv and things like that and so it was just such like a beautiful like little creative world yeah. um and I met a lot of women who kind of created their own jobs and that was pretty inspiring to me as a young 20 something um and you know Instagram had kind of become the latest thing and so I saw the opportunity to use it as like a a platform to promote your business or your your work and so basically right after working in vintage I just started sharing my my drawings on social and yeah that was about seven years ago I think seven eight years ago yeah it is such a good platform isn't it you know lots of people use it now because you can branch out to so many people all over the world yeah, you can just literally specifically target your desired audience or your clientele. And yeah. Yeah. It's so changed a lot, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it has. So is there something, a specific piece that you'd really like to create? Or do you just kind of go with the flow? Do you wake up one day and go, oh, I think I'm going to create this? Or do you have set goals that you want to reach? I mean, it's constantly changing, and I think I'm looking for the through line in that. Um, I mean, I definitely do have have work goals, and right now it's changing. So, you know, a number of years ago, it was more about, like, reaching out to specific people I wanted to work with or whatever, like, getting noticed, things like that. And then now I'm more in this period of um, just really wanting to put out work that feels honest to me. Um, and definitely with like more of like the future I have in mind, um, I'm kind of believing in like give the people what they don't know they want. Cause I think part of me is definitely like, I can tell I hold back sometimes out of that, you know, fear of like, what are people expecting of me? And Mm -hmm. this is like so different. So, you know, um, so like work goals, absolutely. I'm definitely like a, a pretty, like I list, I make lists you know, the last person. Um, yeah, and, me too. <laughs> yeah, eight of ones right now. Yeah, it's really about in this moment, um, creating, creating sort of like a solid body of work, um, yeah. as well as 
planning again for the future and like filmmaking, as I mentioned earlier, is yeah. something that um, I've always wanted to do. So just kind of like, you know, slowly chipping away and, and yeah. putting all the pieces together. So do you like having more than one project on the go at once? <sighs> like, yes and no. <laughs> I mean, there is a part of me that like, for some reason, I just like wish that I was more consistent or something, yeah. but I'm just so led by curiosity and yeah. that has led me to just picking up a bunch of different mediums. And again, it's really about just trying to find whatever will best tell the story that I have in my head. Yeah. Um, and yeah, to not, not worry so much. And again, I think that, you know, the, intellectualizing later and looking back at everything will probably make more sense but sometimes in the moment I just look around and I'm like I feel like I have like 10 different <laughs> yeah. personalities or something you know it's hard isn't it it's hard because I know exactly where you're coming from there's so much there's so much out there and you just want to get hold of so much because like you say the curiosity and and the you know the drive is so to create is so strong but then when you've got so many like we say so many fingers in the pies sometimes yeah. it's like ah I don't you know and you look at all these projects that are kind of like half finished or yeah. like a little bit and that's so frustrating because you want you want them all to be wonderful but you've got to give up a few to concentrate yes. on those but it, sometimes it's so difficult to put that idea or that project to the back of your mind and go I'll open that later like mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have to be done right now I think we've got a really big thing as humanity to like race 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 yeah. and and I want to do it all now and now I want and I want everything done and look at what I can do and you know and actually sometimes it's like chill out take a minute to breathe here and yeah. just focusing on one project doesn't make you any less fantastic any less creative any you know any less driven you can you can just work on one project and I think it's it's allowing yourself to to realize that's okay and and I am horrendous for that I will yeah I want everything and I want it to look look at how brilliant this is because you don't right. it's that fear of failing as well I don't mm -hmm. you never want people to go oh gone stale now you know gone backwards gone stagnant it's not good you know hasn't gone anywhere this year and it's that feeling of like oh no you know I'm not good enough anymore oh for sure um and then there's something to say though too about yeah I'm definitely learning and and trusting more in time and being patient um but there's been a couple of things that I've done and it's just taken just such an, like the evolution of it coming together is pretty cool um, yeah. Like I was doing a series of cloud paintings that I started last year and one of them I could just tell was unfinished and it was bothering me and like I just didn't have the like drive to finish this scene and then what ended up happening was like oh I'm just gonna like paint my hand painting the painting <laughs> yeah. you know so it happened like six months later. And then that turned into um, making sort of like a film, like a short, it's like a 15 second video of my actual hand coming into frame with, you know what I mean? So it was yeah. basically a three part thing that took over the course of a year because I couldn't fully see like what, you know, the idea was and then it all came together. Um, so I think the starting and stopping that there's something to that. And anytime I've tried to like force an idea or finish something I feel like I'm going against the grain and I just have to yeah. like walk away from it start something else and maybe come back to it later absolutely absolutely just talking about that I absolutely love that piece oh thank you honestly when I was um yeah when I was looking at your work that was the one piece that really like really stuck with me I think it's wonderful I know like it's very it's genius every time I look at it I'm like yes that is brilliant because it's so different and I think everybody art is very much um personal opinion isn't it you know one pe person could look at something and go that's incredible another person goes I don't get it um but that is so me like I I love that kind of stuff so yeah I just want to say I do I love that thank you and that was cool because um 
my friend, she's a neighbor and she's a filmmaker. And so she's a brilliant cinematographer. And so, yeah, I was just kind of walking around my studio one day, like holding frames up. And I held it in front of that painting and I was like, light bulb, you know? And so I yeah. just her out. And we sh- I have this idea, can we shoot this tomorrow? Um, and so, yeah, I also like, I think collaboration is like something I'm wanting more of. And that I think makes you feel a little bit more sane as an artist when you have like someone else to bounce an idea off of or, or extra hands who can like help, you know, bring something to life. Definitely, because that leads beautifully onto the next question. Is it is because you've got somebody else that might see it in a different way, and when yeah. you're really at a crossroad or there's a block, and you're like, for whatever reason, this is just I can't go anywhere with it, and somebody comes in and says, "Have you thought of it like this?" or mm-hmm. "Can you look at it from this point of view?" and you just go, "Oh my God, yes, yes, I can see it now." So. Do you, um, obviously you've said you love to collaborate. Is there anyone particular you'd really like to collaborate with? Mm, That's a good question. Um, I don't know if I can name specifics right now. Obviously, I, you know, have like a wish list of like whatever filmmakers and things like that or actors. Um, But yeah, in terms of collaboration, I think it's more about the creative projects being more collaborative and so I've you know gotten to work with a lot of incredible clients over the years um mostly in the fashion industry and so it's more about I think moving forward um presenting bigger concepts you know bigger ideas and have it be more of a, a collaborative thing so whether that is creative directing or I think right now I'm trying to do all of the parts and that's where I'm feeling a little like spread then right <clears throat> yeah definitely um, yeah so I think yeah having a team of other creatives just sounds like a dream and it feels more like play in that way yes. you know I love Absolutely. being on a set I love being in a you know a room where people are creating something just that energy is really um yeah really attractive to me yeah it's very infectious isn't it you know you're Mm -hmm. there and and you know no matter what kind of day you're having or week you're having or whether you just go oh you know just not feeling it today you get in the room and and people are are buzzing ideas and you just you're you're there then aren't you you're stuck and it's it's brilliant and and what's brilliant about working with fantastic creators and and artists is no idea is a stupid idea even Mm -hmm. if it doesn't end up working or like you know you throw something out there it's just ridiculous and even if you're all laughing and going well there we go like it's always accepted and I think that's the biggest thing like we were saying earlier about fear of acceptance from the outside world but when you're in your creative bubble I think because that's so um what is the word you you're nurtured you know you're cared for mm-hmm. you're all you're all with one another that's why that's why I believe it is more difficult to put your stuff out there because you've had that lovely you know bubble of kindness and 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 you know creativity and then you you give it out to everyone else which can be so brutal <laughs> yeah. I know and I think that having more of an innocence to creativity is again something I'm trying to like fall back on because I think that it's just a thing when you get when it becomes your job and it's something you've been doing for a while um you stop experimenting or whatever maybe it is that fear and I think having more um you yeah, have a childlike sense of like I don't know I'm just like here's an idea right yeah. um, it's something that I just am trying to more rely on and own that Absolutely. So we talked a bit about different mediums that you use. Uh, do you have a favourite one that you love to work with? So is it um, painting with the oil paints? Or is it film? Or do you just love it equally? You couldn't possibly choose? Yeah, I mean, right now it's it's painting, it's oils, it's um, I do love drawing. Um, right now I am kind of into like white chalk on black paper. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, I'm constantly taking like little videos and, you know, taking pictures all day. Um, So yeah, it is constantly changing, but those right now are my my favorites. Brilliant. Let's move on to Christmas. Are you a fan of the festive season? 
I love it. Again, yeah. From Los Angeles, I grew up here, but I just crave the cold. And so we at least get a tiny little bit of a change in season. Yeah. Um, but I love Christmas time. I'm super into the traditions. Yeah. Amazing. And what traditions do you have? Right. I mean, things have definitely changed over the last number of years, just yeah. getting older and like family, you know, like the, yeah. the like family stuff, the, the dynamic changes a little bit. Um, but my my sister, uh, she has two nieces, or I have two nieces. She has two daughters. Um, so I feel like this year will feel more like being a kid again or something. You yeah. Kind of Christmas through their eyes, as cheesy as that sounds. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just like to get into the the spirit by. I mean, it's going to be different, right? Because there's not yes. going to be as many like get-togethers and gatherings. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, usually it's, I guess, a lot more like dinner parties at friends' houses and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And um, like, I don't know where you are, but we always have here like Christmas market. So, I mean, it's freezing. So everybody wraps up. So you look like the abominable snowman, you know, you're like literally like (laughs) with hats and scarves. And we always have like mulled wine and, and, you know, Mm. mince pies and looking at the little stalls. And there's always people singing and and Christmas lights. And yeah, here, um, I don't know about where you are, but here, everything like that is cancelled pantomimes um caroling markets stalls all of that has cancelled this year so i mean that's a big like oh you guys that... are so lucky though that that is part of your <laughs> like we don't have anything like that you know like our you know like we have like a what is it it's like a shopping mall like called like the grove in los angeles and, like it's not really my thing but like we don't have like um the Christmas markets I've been um in Paris during Christmas time and oh. have done their Christmas markets along the Champs Elysees and like that to me is so dreamy it's like such like a, a storybook and I imagine South yeah. Wales is probably very beautiful. similar yeah. yeah yeah so if you had to host we talked a little bit about a dinner party there if you had to host a dinner party which five guests would you invite what would be the theme and what food would you have this is a, like a, a very long-winded question Fun. okay so five guests theme and what would we eat? what was the last one yeah what would, what would you eat yeah oh my gosh five guests okay is this dead or alive or is this oh yeah anyone literally um, anybody Okay. Well, first, Steve Coogan, the British comedian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know Steve Coogan. My number yeah. one. So it'll probably just be him and I. No. Um, <laughs> maybe this will be weird. How about like Oprah? Okay. Um, who else? This is really hard. Um, let's see. Maybe like. I mean, Julia Louise Dreyfus. Maybe we'll just make it like a real funny dinner with ultimate wisdom from Oprah. Um, <laughs> man, three other people, two other people. Um, let me think on it. But I think we would be kind of like a Renaissance theme or like a medieval cool. theme or something like that. With some, Love it. I bought these like colorful like glasses during quarantine for no reason other than the fact that they're just so cool to look at so probably with some like pretty like you know theatrical place settings and um what would we eat maybe like maybe like a french meal or something like beef beef bourguignon I don't know um and I have two other guests I don't know have you done this question for other people and for yourself who would be yours maybe it'll help me uh I don't know I think I'd well you've already got someone funny so um I don't I always choose somebody like within theatre so um yeah yeah, someone theatrical um I don't I don't know I I like David Attenborough oh I think great I think I would really want I would really want to I mean I don't think anyone would get a word in edgeways though because he's he would just read the menu for everybody I love him (laughs) I really love him so I mean I would really like him um there was an actor um Alan Rickman um he's he's no longer with us but he was have you seen Harry Potter 
You know, I actually have not seen or read any Harry Potter. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it, it's okay. It was never my bag. I only watched them over quarantine. But he's he's in that. But um, he's in. Lo- have you seen Love Actually? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. I just love his voice. Everything about his voice is just like chocolate to me. So I would just love him to talk at me. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, and then speaking of Love Actually, maybe we'd have like Joni Mitchell just like there and she would break out into a song at some point or something. because why not absolutely yeah you need somebody who's going to entertain everybody right I think so so if you could interview one person is there somebody that you would just love to talk to obviously apart from me because I know I <laughs> do you love to talk to is there somebody who you kind of looked up to as a child or somebody who you just think is really really interesting Hmm. Um. Man, these questions are really good, but I feel like I have to think about this. Who would I want okay. to interview? Um, I think because I'm like really leaning into film right now, like contemporary directors and filmmakers that I like. Um, currently, like Luca Guadagino or um Paul Thomas Anderson. I thought Phantom Thread was one of the most beautiful um movies that has come out in the last five years um so yeah it would probably be somebody in that world because I feel like such an outsider you know and I definitely feel like I would be more like a like such a sponge and just really soak up you know absolutely say definitely it's always really interesting isn't it when you're really interested in something but you like you say, you're very like novice to it. And when somebody's talking at you, you just like, like you say, you just take it all in and you're like, it's good. My brain's going to explode. <laughs> but, but Yeah, I know. And that's kind of how I like, I think, address like different like creative um, projects or whenever I'm like shifting gears or something. It's like, I just think of myself as such like a student of life and I just want to like know as much as possible about something. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Do you have a favorite film? Um, I have so many. Like top ten? No. Um, a you can do film. top five. Okay. Uh, Paper Moon okay. from the seventies. Yeah, Peter Donovich. I love that movie. Um, there's a film called Baby Face from 1933. Um, it was like pre-code era, so it was kind of like you know, okay for the time in terms of its subject matter and stuff. And yep. it's with Barbara Stanwyck. And I just think she's such a incredible, like, female lead. Um, yes. Barry Lyndon, definitely one of my top. Um, silly, but Howard's End, because I just love the, like, English countryside, you know, masterpiece yes. class drama. Um, <laughs> I think that movie is beautiful. And... Um, do I need one more? Yes. I guess Thread, I thought, was just such a masterpiece. Yes. I really loved it. Amazing. So what would who would you say were the greatest couple or duo in a film? Um, probably Paper Moon. I would say Ryan O'Neill and Tatum O'Neill. That father-daughter dynamic um, yeah. was pretty incredible and really comedic. And, yeah, I really enjoyed that and their chemistry. Beautiful. What? Well, brilliant so what about musicals are you a fan of theatre um musicals in general do you do you like to go and watch them I love it all I know that I'm like again I'm not totally like versed in that um in that but yeah I don't know that I have a favorite but I think you know growing up dancing and and yeah. I just love watching performers and um do you have a favorite a favorite musical uh I think it's probably Wicked yeah yeah um it was the first one when I was about 10 I think that um I heard the soundtrack and I was like oh wow I just I knew nothing of the storyline um it wasn't until a few years later that everyone was like yeah it's the prequel to the Wizard of Oz I didn't realize I had no concept of what it was about but just the music was just insane and I remember I think I was about 17 the first time I went to see it and since almost 10 years I have seen it 
13 times. <laughs> um, yeah, it is one of my favourites. When I was at drama school in London, um, we used to get like five pound tickets, like really, really cheap tickets. Um, so I used to go all the time. Um, my oh, family... Wow. My family used to joke that um, was I actually doing any studying because I was always at the theatre. <laughs> that is definitely studying. Um, <laughs> I mean, I feel like then eventually you're going to have to, you know, do either your own like reproduction of it or hopefully, yeah, have your have your hand in that show in some yeah. in some way, right? Do you feel like those two things, like directing and performing, are of equal importance and significance to you or do you think one sort of outweighs the other I think currently um directing definitely uh, is at the forefront um just because it's what I do more of um and have done for the past couple of years and also I feel very stable in it I feel um I feel like I've gotten to know it. I feel like we're friends <laughs> um, mm -hmm. and I feel that um, I can creatively kind of let go and um, it's it's a real strong point for me. Whereas I think with um, the musical performance wise, I'm still very much in my head about it. I get yeah. quite worked up about it and it's something that I feel like I'm very, it makes me very vulnerable um, and I'm very much open to um not being good enough critiqued uh, and, and that happens right across everywhere okay and I know that but when I'm directing I never feel that I, mm. I never feel I never feel um not safe I always feel like my best is always good enough even if people don't like it whereas mm. when I'm performing I've always got that what if I'm not good enough and I think totally. that's something yeah I mean, and, and I think that knowing that and having that experience would only make you a better director because you can, like, pull out, you know, the insecurities in your actors or, you know, like, work through that with them. It just makes you a more empathetic person, right? And what do you need to have as yeah. um, a director? There's, it makes me think of, have you seen the documentary Seymour and Introduction? No, I never write it down. It's great. It's, um about a, a pianist and he was this like brilliant player and you know was performing a lot in like the 50s and 60s I think played his last show and didn't tell anybody it was going to be his last performance because he hated the feeling of performing like him playing piano like that was not you know the performance aspect of it he just hated um he ended up dedicating his life to teaching and it's a film um Ethan Hawke produced and directed it um, and so he's in it, but, um, it's just such an incredible story. And like this guy holds so much wisdom and, yes. um, yeah, it's kind of similar though to, I get it that like stage fright can be just, I don't know. It like, kill, it feels like it's killing you sometimes. Yeah. It's <laughs> right? crippling. Yeah, it yeah. is crippling. It is. And it's so funny because people will always say to me, parents, family members, audience members, um, how nurturing I am with the children and how mm -hmm. you've got kids that come into me who literally don't stop crying from the moment they get to me <laughs> to the end to when they go home. But the transition and transformation within like six months, a year, and these kids are stood on the stage singing, sometimes solos in front of, you know, hundreds, thousand people. And they go, how on earth have you managed to? But I think I just said my best quality was seeing the best in people. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, that's something that although I would love to be able to stand on the stage and do it myself, I don't think I'd give up. I give up that little dream to be mm -hmm. able to do what I do because in in being able to give to the children you know they're all living living what they're enjoying and living their dream and seeing them enjoy it fills me with so much pride and and hope and joy for them I almost don't mind not being on there myself absolutely and I've had you know teachers over the years that have shown me something or have said something that like I still years later when approaching a drawing or something like I can still hear and that you know is so important right like yeah. having that kind of mentorship and teachers and yeah especially for the littles who just need that yeah. guidance and that push that they might not be getting you know 
every yeah. day. And, and you're also like, like you're creating this little world, you know, yeah. and like you get to like see it when you walk into that room or, you know, into that production or whatever. And yeah. I think sometimes maybe people don't understand like the power, the power and just like the, the skill involved of being a director and be able to, you know, put all these things together. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's been piano for me this during quarantine. It's like I played as a kid and like over the years, but I hadn't really dedicated time, especially as an adult, to like study a piece. Yeah. And it's just for me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't yeah. plan on performing piano in front of anybody, um, but it's just something that I like really look forward to every day. And like, I surprised myself, like how far I've come in the last few months. Um, so I think it's also a, like totally okay. And um, I think to have something that isn't about the end goal of like, how is it going to make you money or like, you know, is, yeah. is important. So yeah, absolutely. So my very last question is kind of in two halves. So it's what have you been busy doing whilst in quarantine and um do you have some goals as to what's next for you moving forward kind of into next year yeah so yeah work I've been practicing on piano recently um and um honestly like truly have surprised myself with some, not to like pat myself on the back but I like yeah. started studying a Chopin piece that like I don't really have any business learning but it's been really slow and I've just like slowly chipped away and I've made a lot of progress so um there's been that um I take a lot of walks I always have and so just spending as much time as possible outside that's really important just for my general being and Definitely. also for my creativity um I kind of need to move to get you know the wheels turning a little bit yeah um and yeah, I'm kind of more, I've been creating a ton, but haven't really shared too much this year publicly. Um, I think I'm kind of just, I'm trying to just create as though like if Instagram didn't exist, if you know what I mean? Like if nothing else that I've done like mattered or whatever, like what would I actually be creating, honestly? So I'm kind of just using this time to be like a bit of a hermit. Um, I yeah. live alone right now and I'm single right now. So I'm pretty grateful to be able to like be alone in my own thoughts every day. Yeah. Um, and yeah, what else? There's been, yeah, it's mostly that. So it's kind of in a way a pretty dreamy lifestyle at this point. I don't have yeah. a lot to complain about. Um, <laughs> And I've also used this time to like say like no to a couple of like client work things that I just yeah. felt were kind of like my old, you know, past life or something in yeah. a way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just using this time to just like be really like getting to know myself a little bit more and thinking about what I want moving forward. Um, so future goals would be, again, like wanting to have a little bit of you know, bigger concepts being brought to life and would love to, whether that's like direct short films um, for ad campaigns um, or music videos, things like that. Um, and yeah, I'd like to see my work have just different um, life forms, especially outside of just like a digital screen. So whether that's like a book or um hopefully a show one day of paintings um yeah I'm kind of just amazing would you ever consider coming over to um the UK and doing something like an art installation or something absolutely um I love the UK I have only been to um England I went to London once a couple years ago and Bath for a day which was so beautiful um, yeah. But I really love it over there. And I've actually thought about um, relocating at some point and maybe having London be a destination for sure. I think the art scene there is so incredible. That's something that I really noticed, like even in terms of the street art, um, there's a lot of residencies at hotels, things like that. Or like when you're in a restaurant, you can like definitely see like, you know, the attention to art and everything yes, like absolutely. that. It's a great city for that, I think.
Yeah, it really is. I mean, um, yeah, just beautiful. And it's bustling with different types of work and um, different concepts. So, yeah, definitely good for that. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me. Thank you. It was so much fun. It's nice to meet another person. It's been a while. <laughs> I know it's so funny isn't it it's like right okay I have to be sociable what do I say <laughs> exactly I know there's like a few questions I'm like I don't remember how to communicate with it <laughs> no you were wonderful and it was lovely to meet you um and I would love to keep in touch yeah likewise good luck with yeah. everything thank yeah. you so much yeah. thank you yeah I know but Christmas will be here before we know it and um yeah we'll be into 2021 and um yeah, hopefully we'll be able to start moving around in the world again. And, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll, our paths will cross at some point. I hope so. That would be great. That would be awesome. Well, for now, take care. And I will definitely send you the link when it goes up on the channel. And we'll keep in touch for sure. All right, love. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Wow. Wasn't that fantastic? Thank you so much. I had a wonderful time. I hope you're all having a wonderful festive season and more importantly than anything else, eating your whole body weight in food. <laughs> Take care, everyone, and I'll see you again next time for another fantastic guest. Best wishes.